OK, ready? Um, don't run. Oh, Deb. Um, please walk. Would you accept that? Mm -hmm. Good. Does it feel different to hear that? OK, now we're going to, you got the easy one. And we'll <laughs> <laughs> it's because I helped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't hit. <laughs> Let's use nice hands. Use nice hands. Gentle How about touches. that? OK. Yes. I have an old friend I knew who said when they hit, I tell them, I said, we don't hit our friends. We do nice. And then the child touches the other child as if they're petting a dog. OK, now, do Nancy, nice. can you put that in a phrase that doesn't have a negative word in it? We don't hit our friend is negative. We're nice to our friends. We're nice to our friends. Now let's push on this. What does nice mean? We're, we're gentle to. We're gentle to our friends. So you would define gentle as? S softer or right. nice. <laughs> right, right. OK. But do you see where we're going? We're trying to change the language. We want to get rid of the words don't, no, stop, shut up, cut, up, cut it out, quit. Because children get so overloaded with this language, so overwhelmed with all the things they cannot do, that some of them react by saying, oh, these adults, they just tell me no all the time, so I'm going to try to do as much stuff as I can before they catch me, <laughs> or they're going to defy you and say, I will anyway. So, Changing the negative words into positive sets up an atmosphere in which you are the child's ally and not the adversary. No, that's not right. Adversary. Adversary, thank you. So let's go on with this, and we're going to get a little bit harder. Don't bite him. Is there a reason why you're biting him? Well, that would be one approach, wouldn't it? And if the child said, what might the child say? <laughs> he took my toy away. OK. So then where do you go? So then you could say, um, Johnny is playing with the toy right now. Would you tell Jack that you will give him a turn when you're finished? Jack, J Jimmy will give you a turn when he is finished. And then you stick around. And you see that children will usually keep it just a little while and then hand it right over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. OK, let's go on getting tougher. Um, don't spit at me, young woman. Keep our germs to ourselves. Keep our germs to ourselves. Well, that's an interesting <laughs> thought. I've never had anybody say that. I think, that <laughs> I think that's great. What do you think? Would it work? Maybe. No, you're saying no. What would you say instead? You would try to encourage, you would tell them that spitting isn't appropriate. And because appropriate is probably another word that they're going to understand. You're going to tell them that it's just a rule that we don't choose to use in this class. OK, but get, do it without negative words. How about spitting makes me feel bad? Spitting makes me feel bad. I don't think I agree with you, Eileen, because spitting is a, is a skill, and it's very useful. You know, we all have to spit. I mean, babies don't spit and can't spit. They don't know how to spit. So as you go through the preschool years, it must be quite a feeling of accomplishment that all of a sudden I can do this, and I can see that big people do this, because sometimes I'm in the bathroom with dad and mom, and they spit. Yes. This isn't the appropriate place or time to spit. Say it without a negative word. Um, oh, that is tough. Uh, how about we practice spitting later? And where? In the bathroom sink. OK. Now, how about shortening that? If you need to spit, go to the bathroom and do it in the sink. And maybe I'd like to come with you and see how well you spit in the bathroom, OK? Maybe the, maybe the spitting was a, a bid for attention, 
and he's got the attention. Why do we say he? She spits too. Okay. And if she knows that this is an okay behavior, but it's the place that was wrong, right? Boy, you can spit, but come into the bathroom. Now, do we ever use negative words? You can't not. And, <laughs> and they're very useful. So we want to keep those negative words. Stop, no, don't, cut it out, not shut up, but be quiet. They're useful, but I think if we could have an imaginary um, quota, say you can use 10 negative words in a day, and you begin to be aware of how our speech just incorporates negative words. We, we say isn't and don't and just automatically. So let's hone in, let's limit ourselves on negative words, and let's save the strong negatives for special occasions like safety or things we feel particularly strongly about. Now if a child spat in my face, I would react with great negativity. I would say, I don't like that. You know, we don't spit in people's faces. I'm using lots of negative words. But I wouldn't say it about a lot of the other stuff, like running and um, putting toys away and so many of these situations that just seem to be automatic no responses from us. So will you keep that in mind? Will you keep in mind that one of the first things we can do to establishing this relationship between adult and child as allies is to modify our language. Okay. Jenny, one of the things I heard when you said, don't spit in my face, I don't, I don't like that, is you said, I, you, uh, you didn't say, you, you did it to me. Oh, good. You said, I don't like it. So mm -hmm. you didn't put the blame on the child. Mm -hmm. You allowed the child to know that you were unhappy with what happened to you. Mm -hmm. So I caught that right away when you Good. said that. Good. I'm glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I live in the school age world most of my life. Right. So I'm wondering, because I think in, in our world it is appropriate at times to say, how would you feel if mm -hmm. I did that or if that happened to you? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that as an approach? Well, I think with school-age children, that's a legitimate approach, and we probably would use it. But I wouldn't use it with a two, three, four, and maybe not even a five-year-old, because I think they just say, you know, it, it's really interesting to think about when empathy begins, because we don't know. And some babies seem to be more empathic than others. I don't know if you've kind of had that impression. But you know, you'll see a, a baby's whole face crumple when somebody else cries. Mm -hmm. And it's obvious that that baby is acknowledging feelings in somebody else. But I wouldn't count on it because uh, you don't know who's empathic and who's not. But sure, I would use that with school-age children. Would you? Would the rest of you? Yeah? And how about over here? Would you? 